I travel to Disney World at least twice a month for work, so I am the ultimate Disney World travel expert. Today, I am giving you all of my best sneaky travel trips to make your vacation that much easier. Let's get started. Now, first things first, before you even get to the airport, you have some other planning to do, which some people would argue is the most important part of the planning process, and that is packing. Figure out what you're going to wear, what you're going to bring, make sure it all fits in your suitcase. That takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of planning. I always pack at least a day before, if not earlier, because I have things that I wanna bring, I wanna make sure everything fits, all of that good stuff. So I take packing very seriously. Now, the type of luggage I have, I do have an away carry-on, which I love. I've had it for years, it's great. It comes with a lot of accessories. It's cute and pink and fun, so I love it a lot. I know that Emma has Miller luggage that she loves. Cassie has iFly luggage and Quincy uses an Eagle Creek carry-on or if she's just having a backpack and not paying for a carry-on, she uses Marmont. Now you do need to think about what time of year you are going to Orlando. Most of the time it's gonna be hot no matter what, but there are instances where it does get chilly, it gets cold. Um, sometimes you need to pack layers depending on the time of year. My biggest tip, pack layers, wear layers, bring layers, things that you can take off throughout the day. Make sure you're comfortable in what you're wearing. Also, there's a good amount that at some point during your trip, it's gonna rain. It is Orlando, it rains all the time, especially in the summer months. It's gonna rain every single day. So bring a rain jacket, bring rain gear, bring a poncho if you want. Um, I don't recommend waiting until you are stuck in the rain at Disney World to get rain gear because then you're gonna pay $12 or more per poncho and that's not cool. So bring your rain gear, even if it's just a light rain jacket, I'm bringing that today. Just a little something to keep you covered because it's gonna rain. Now what I like to do is plan out my outfits every single day. So you can see here on my bed, I've got one day's worth of clothes, another day, another day, and another day. So I'm going for four days this time and here are all my outfits. I have everything I need. I've got shoes, I've got undergarments and things, I've got accessories, I've got ears. So everything is laid out and planning out your outfits in advance. Number one, make sure you look good. Number two, it helps you pack less because instead of just throwing a bunch of random stuff in your bag, maybe I'll wear it, maybe I won't, um, it saves more space in your bag. So I highly recommend planning out your outfits day by day. Now this is everything I am taking this trip and you might be wondering how I'm going to get all of this into that carry-on right there. But I have a secret. Packing cubes. Uh, packing cubes are great. These packing cubes that I have, they're pink, so they match my <laughs> luggage, and they are also the Away brand as well. So Away brand sells them. You can find them on Amazon. They are great. They're gonna help me condense all of this into my suitcase. See, look at that. That's amazing. That is really all of my clothes are in this one packing cube, except for my yellow dress that's in here. Mickey ears can fit my extra pair of shoes my accessories, ears, all of that is only in half of my carry-on. And then makeup, toiletries, my hair care stuff. Um, and I still have room left. So packing cubes are a lifesaver. They are amazing. There are so many out there to choose from. Highly recommend. Also, another tip, leave room for souvenirs. Now, I won't be doing that this trip because I really won't be buying anything. But if you know you're gonna spend some money on some fun souvenirs, make sure you leave room in your suitcase or else it's gonna be pretty difficult to bring them home. So this is an example of a good, good packed suitcase with even room for souvenirs. Another good thing to have is some kind of dirty clothes bag. So with my Away suitcase, it actually comes with one and this pins right here and I fold it up and it tucks away right there but it's a good idea to bring a dirty clothes bag. So while you are there on vacation, you can just throw this all in here. It won't stink up the rest of your suitcase and it's super easy when you get home, you just unzip it, pour all that in the laundry and do your laundry. If you are taking a check bag, it is important to keep medication, a change of clothes, important necessities on you while you're traveling, just in case something were to happen with your luggage. It happens sometimes, luggage gets lost, luggage is a flight behind. And another good idea is to have a bag on you at all times with your medications. And that could be prescriptions or it could also be, you know, Tylenol, Advil, those kinds of things, Moleskin, Band-Aids, what have you. Um, you can just make a big bag of them and just keep it with you all, 
all the time. That can be your travel medical bag. And then all you have to do is just replenish it when needed, which shouldn't be very often, but that's just easy to grab out of the closet, throw it in your suitcase, and you know you have everything you need. Now, here's some important items that you probably have thought of, but I'm just gonna tell you anyways, so you can remember to pack them. Sunglasses, maybe even backup sunglasses if you lose them like I do. Um, also, don't bring fancy expensive sunglasses. Bring the cheap ones because they might get broken or lost. You need a credit card. You need a backup credit card and you probably need cash because sometimes systems don't work even now. So just bring extra cash just in case or if you wanna tip people with cash, there you go. You need so many chargers, chargers, portable chargers, extra outlets, backup, backup chargers. Honestly, in my opinion, you can never have enough chargers. You need comfy shoes. And if they're new shoes, please break them in before you go to Disney World. That would be terrible to break in your shoes while you're at Disney World. You're gonna need sunscreen. Even in the winter months, you need sunscreen in Florida. Please wear sunscreen. And if you really wanna know what our favorite essentials are, you can totally head to allyours.net slash outfit We've got all of our essentials on there. We've got makeup essentials. We've got park bag essentials. We've got traveling essentials, all of that. Everything that you need, we've got it for you on that website. You can also check us out at All Your Style on Instagram. We've got all of that linked for you in our stories. And you know what? We do Q and A's all the time. Ask us what you wanna see and we will tell you. So I also do the same thing with my electronics that I do with my clothes. So I've got iPad and the iPad charger. I've got phone not phone, I've got computer and the computer charger. I have multiple devices that I need to charge and everything when I travel, so this is gonna be great. Um, headphones with the charger, and I've got my whole bag of portable chargers in here. There's one, two, three in here with all of their cords, and I just bought another one. So that's another one to add to my collection because I can never have enough. All of these things are laid out so that I can put them in my carry-on. And something else that I wanna point out, um, especially if you're a young girl traveling like myself, or if you are anyone traveling and just want to feel safer, um, I do have a door lock that I take whenever I stay in hotels just for extra protect protection because you never know. Um, this is also something I got my stocking this year for Christmas. So I do take this now with me when I travel. But most of the time I stay at Emma's house, so it's not necessary, but I do have this for when I need it. And here are some items you might not think of. Some of these might not be necessary for you, but maybe you want them. You could bring slippers or fuzzy socks if bare feet on hotel carpet aren't your thing. I get it. You could also bring shower shoes in case you want those. Earplugs, a small bottle of perfume. Most hotels do have a hairdryer that comes with it. Some people like to bring their own just because they have better hair dryers at home or you can even bring um, diffuser attachments for your hair dryer if you want to bring those with you. Um, hand sanitizer, a small bottle of hand soap because some people don't like the bars of soap that you get in hotels. Maybe you need a travel steamer. Um, maybe, maybe you need a small fan for the room or some kind of noise machine. Also, fun fact, this is what Emma uses. If you have Spotify Premium, um, they do have sleep playlists that are like noise machines. So if you have Spotify Premium, you already have one of those. Uh, maybe you need a nightlight or a reading light. Rooms can get dark, especially for kids, or if you want to read at night. Not all rooms have lights above the bed. If you want to know which Disney hotels do, you can check out our whole resort tour playlist. Quincy has stayed at every single resort in Disney World, and we have a tour of it. So you've come to the right place. If you want to know anything and everything about all of those hotels, be sure and check out that playlist, it's so helpful. And more items you might not think of. Paper soap sheets to wash your hands. Sometimes if the soap is out in the bathrooms around Disney World or wherever you're going, you can buy paper soap sheets that actually turn into soap when it gets wet. Same thing for paper laundry soap. All the hotels at Disney have self-serve laundry rooms and even larger DVC rooms have them in the room. So you can do laundry if you want to. That's something to remember to bring supplies for that because if you wait until you're in Disney World, they're gonna be a lot more expensive. You can even bring things like a luggage cup holder to hold your coffee while you run around the airport. Maybe you need wipes, both flushable and non-flushable, <laughs> if you catch my drift. Or Ziploc baggies. Our reporters use those a lot for leftovers, so maybe you need them for food if you're bringing your own snacks or leftovers in the park, or even if you don't want your phone to get wet, that can be a great thing to put your phone in a Ziploc baggie and you can still use it. 
And one other item I want to shout out, um, a lot of people don't know this, but you can bring your own food into Disney World. And sometimes that means you might need to bring a cooler of sorts. Now you don't want to bring the huge, big rolling coolers, of course, but this is a cool little cooler. It's very handy, it's very flat, and it even has a strap on it. So you can wear it like a backpack. And so if you wanted to bring food, um, this is perfect. So things like this are great to bring to Disney World that you might not have thought that you needed. And here's the final look at the suitcase. So while I didn't need to save room for souvenirs, I put all of my chargers and things that I won't need while I'm at the airport. I put them in my lounge fly bag and then put the lounge fly bag in here. Suitcase is full. I've got everything. And then all of my carry-on accessories fit in my little travel bag. So all I need to bring is this carry-on and that bag. And it's going to make traveling so much easier not to have to haul a whole bunch of stuff around. And just like always, I have to do this every single time. Well, this time I don't think I packed as much, which is very surprising to me. Now I'm all ready to go. Let's hop in our lift and head to the airport. Okay, I got my lunch in the express. And now I'm sitting in a little, a little hideaway that honestly is one of my favorite parts of the DFW airport and nobody knows about it because no one is ever back here. Anyways, that's a pro tip that most of you will not need. But let's talk about airport tips. First off, check your airline's policies on bag sizes because there have been times before where I think my bag is the correct size and I don't think they're like, I think they're gonna let me on, no problem. And then I get to the gate and I'm like, eh, just kidding, you have to pay for that. It's an extra $100. So don't get caught by surprise. Check the bag policies online. They've got it for you. Of course, check in for your flight early in advance. I always do it on my phone. I get the mobile boarding pass. It's super easy, no more paper. It's so seamless. Check in 24 hours before your flight. Uh, make sure you're good with that so you don't have to do it when you get to the airport. Of course, for more money, you can invest in TSA PreCheck, which is super fast because sometimes those security lines can be very, very long. Good morning from MCO. We're at Terminal B and we're a little bit late because of me packing. Luckily, my dad and I, my dad's here with me. We both have uh, expedited security programs that we're a part of. I'm a part, <laughs> he's taking B-roll. I'm part of uh, Clear. My dad is part of TSA PreCheck. So we're going to do a quick little experiment. We're both going to set our timers and see which one of us gets through security faster. Bye dad. Did you, you're setting your timer? And it's six and a half minutes. I beat my dad. And I'm through security. The, uh, six, six minutes 30. You were in line before me and you have gotten through security after me. So at least today, TSA pre-check took a minute longer than clear. Um, but who knows? That could change depending on who you have in front of you. Yes, we both had people taking some time in front of us. Um, but now the real challenge is gonna to be to see if we make our flight. Some other differences to consider between Clear and TSA PreCheck. My dad paid $78 for five years of TSA PreCheck and he only got through security a minute, <laughs> minute after me. I paid $189 for Clear for one year. I got through a minute faster. I don't have to pull my ID out. They scan my eyeballs, which is cool and futuristic. My dad did have to pull his ID out. Is, is it worth that much more money to not have to pull your ID out? And I let a large family go ahead of me. Yes, we know you let a large family. We all had large had families go ahead of us that had a lot of things, yes, happened. and took a long time. So TSA PreCheck, you can do a frequent flyer program if you know that you're gonna fly a lot with one airline. You can do airline credit cards. There's so many things out there now for you to save money and to rack up points. So look into those for you and your family. So the TSA website is very helpful. I was looking at it yesterday. It answers all of these questions that you need to know about what to pack, what not to pack, all of these guidelines and everything. So if you need help, look at the TSA website. Now, if you drove to the airport and you left it in the parking lot, write it down, take a picture of your car so that you remember where it is because 
a week later after your fun-filled Disney vacation, you're, you're not gonna remember where you parked it, so just take the picture. Also, make your luggage easy to identify, whether that's buying pink luggage, you know, I can easily spot my luggage when it comes off the plane. Um, tie a ribbon on your luggage. Maybe it's a black suitcase and it's not very noticeable. Tie a ribbon on it. Do something to make it stand out so that you can easily find your luggage when it comes around the back plane. Also, another good thing to look into is airport lounges. If you have a long layover, research your airline and airport to see if this is a good option for you. A lot of the times they're very nice spaces for you to relax. It's not crowded. They've got outlets and beverages and food. So that could be an option for you as well. Why, why is it a collective human experience that as soon as you get to the airport, you have to go find your gate, look at it, see that it exists, and then leave and go get all of your food and whatever else you want. I just did that. I did that. I do that every time. Like I know the gate is going to be there. I've seen it before. I usually fly out of the same gates, um, but I still, I have to go check to make sure it's not missing before I go get a snack. So please tell me that you do that too. Please validate me because I feel like it's a collective human experience. And once you get on the plane, you're gonna want some things to occupy your time, occupy your kids' time. So those are things like iPad, computer, maybe a book, some activities for the kids, whether that's coloring books or activity pages, etc. Download movies ahead of time. I do that a lot. I love doing that because for me, pretty much my flight from Texas to Florida is about the length of a movie. So normally I use that time to catch up on movies that I haven't seen yet. Maybe you need a pillow or a blanket because you know you're going to take a nap. Also, it's very important to bring headphones because a lot of the times now the rules on planes are you can't listen to anything unless you have headphones plugged in. So if you want an audiobook or a podcast or Spotify Premium and you download your music or you have Apple Music or whatever music you listen to, you need headphones for that. You can also bring your own snacks to save money so that you don't have to pay for them. Also, very important, bring an empty water bottle also can double as your park water bottle. I'm not a mom, I'm not a parent, um, but we have a lot of moms on our team at All Years that are moms and travel a lot with their kids. So I asked them, they gave me some great advice. We also have some really good articles on the website specifically for stroller accessories and for flying with a baby. So I will link those down in the description for you to check out. We've got tons of great resources on our website. So moms, parents, grandparents, anybody traveling with kids, Go check those out. I think I just built the best burrito at Moe's in the Orlando airport because I was very hungry as soon as I got off the plane. And Emma's at the parks tonight, so we're both going to be getting back to her house at the same time. So she's not gonna have anything ready for us to eat, so I got food here. This is a really good burrito. Eat it, Moe's. Now I'm here in Orlando. <laughs> it happens so often now. Um, but it's still super fun to arrive at the airport and you're like, oh, we're going to Disney. Now, now let's talk about how to get from the airport to your hotel. Unfortunately, there's no more Magical Express. So most likely you're looking at a rideshare service like Uber or Lyft to take you from the airport to your hotel. We like to recommend that you have both apps download on your phone. You can compare prices. You can pick, compare times on how long it's going to take for a car to come pick you up, just compare, see what's best, what the best price is, best time. So prices will fluctuate depending on time of day. So have both apps downloaded so that you can get the best price. There are shuttle services, but it is no longer included in your vacation package with Disney. MCO does have Mears Connect and the Sunshine Flyer. Mears Connect is credible. It was the company that operated the Magical Express on Disney's behalf, and Sunshine Flyer is comparable to Mears. So both options are available for you, but they now are an extra cost. You can also rent a car. It might be a good option if you are staying somewhere like an Airbnb or wanting to travel outside of the Disney bubble during your vacation. But again, rental car prices can get very, very high and it can take a long time for you to get your rental car once you get to the airport. Yes, you made it. Welcome to the place where dreams come true, the Walt Disney World Resort. Now you might think the stresses of travel have magically melted away as soon as you step on property. And while that might be true, we're gonna give you a few more travel tips to make sure you are ready to go on your Disney vacation. Now it's time for travel tips, Disney World edition. 
At nearly 40 square miles, Walt Disney World is huge, and getting around on your vacation almost always requires at least one form of Disney transportation, if not multiple. You can use buses, boats, the monorail, the Skyliner, walking paths, and even Disney's own minivans. But not all of these options are available at each park. Here I am at the Ticket and Transportation Center. This is gonna be the location where, one, if you're buying any or purchasing any tickets for Magic Kingdom, this is probably where you'll end up doing it. But also, this is where you'll see all of your transportation that's gonna lead you to the Magic Kingdom, uh, the monorail or the uh, ferry boat. Also, this is also a solid place to get some Joffrey so that way you're not dealing with the Main Street Bakery, those crazy lions over there. But let's start with the, uh, the ferry boat. Now, if you're taking the ferry boat, I highly recommend you heading uh, into the ferry boat and go upstairs. Not only are you going to uh, get away from the large crowd that's trying to get to the Magic Kingdom, but also you're actually helping cast members and uh, your other guests. Because the more people that go upstairs, the more people they can actually fit inside the boat. That way it lowers the uh, wait time for the next boat and so on and so on. So uh, head upstairs to not only save yourself from the giant crowd that's headed to the Magic Kingdom, but also uh, well, that, that way you can let some other guests on. Now, typically I'm a monorail guy, so I hardly ever take the ferry boat just, just because the monorail is typically quicker unless there are crazy long lines. Uh, but while we're on the ferry boat, we'll talk about uh, my favorite uh, sneaky tip for the monorail. Just to get, if, if you want to be the first in line for rope drop, this is what you got to do. The ferry boat, Richard F. Irvine. There she is. The castle. Now the pilot is in there. Uh, look at this view. Honestly, the view is better up on the second floor as well. Note to self, uh, way too windy to record any audio on the on the ferry. But also, that's now, now that's kind of a plus. You, if you, if you need some wind, you need some fresh air. Uh, again, second floor. Tips. Now, if you're trying to be really, really first in line, or at least second in line, or, or just close to the front of the line for rope drop, and when I say rope drop, rope drop is just a fancy way of uh, saying park open, here is what I recommend. First off, I highly suggest you use the monorail if you're going to rope drop, but if you're at the Ticket and Transportation Center, you should go uh, to the monorail and go all the way to the far left, getting the furthest left like vehicle that you can on the monorail. And uh, that will get you closest to the turnstiles. It'll get you closest to uh, the turnstiles. You'll be the first one off the monorail. And also, nine times out of ten, the furthest you go on either side of the monorail, it's probably going to be less people. So, uh, less people crowded in your one specific vehicle. So, that's always a bonus for me anyway. All right? Let's head inside the park. Wait, 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 but before I forget, if you're traveling to or from the Magic Kingdom, I highly recommend, really recommend avoiding boat traveling during the electrical water pageant. Now, the electrical water pageant is a, uh, a free parade that happens here uh, at the Magic Kingdom on, uh, on Seven Seas Lagoon. And it just, uh, it's a bunch of different floats that are lit up and it's retro and it's, it's a lot of different, and they play, it's like, um, it's like the electrical Main Street parade, but on the water, it's very fun. But when that's happening, uh, the, the other boats, they're not allowed to go out on the water. So if you see that happening, don't get in a line for the ferry, don't get in a line for uh, a resort boat, you know, uh, use the monorail because you won't even be able to get on the water until after the entire electrical water parade uh, is, uh, is over. So avoid travel during the electric. Just enjoy the show when it goes away, then you can get on a boat or just get on the monorail. All right, moving on. All right, I pulled off to the side so I could talk about uh, I could talk about the other parks, even though I'm here at Magic Kingdom, enjoying the magic of the kingdom. I'm gonna talk about some other parks too. Now we're talking a lot about different forms of transportation, but the fastest form of transportation might actually just be your feet. Specifically, if you're staying around the boardwalk area, I'm talking about uh, uh, Swan and Dolphin, Yacht and Beach Club, Boardwalk Resort. Uh, and if you're, if you're up for a morning walk, you could easily just walk to Hollywood Studios within 10 to 15 minutes, super easy. That depends how quickly you're walking, but that's, that's up to you and your legs. 
you know, might take Quincy and I 15, 17 minutes, might take Fry Bucket four. You know, that's, that's, uh, I'm kidding, probably 10, I'm just saying. And of course, there's the International Gateway, which is the back entrance of Epcot. So if you're one of the lucky few who are standing around the boardwalk, again, Boardwalk Resort, Yacht and Beach Club, uh, um, Swan and Dolphin, you do have access to the International Gateway, and that's perfect for if you're, I don't know, drinking around the world or doing a, seeing a late night concert series at the American Gardens Theater, or I don't know, just uh, just enjoying a uh, world showcase. That's, that, that's perfect for you. And don't forget the Skyliner is actually literally right next to the International Gateway. So for those of you who are connected to the Skyliner, like uh, if you're staying at uh, Caribbean Beach Resort, uh, Pop Century, Animation, anything connected to the, to the Skyliner, you also have access to the International Gateway in case you wanted to rope drop Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, which is, you know, that's the only way. To oh, there's a show starting. There's a show starting. Okay, we gotta move it. I gotta watch the show, then we'll keep talking about tips. I gotta watch the show. Live entertainment's important. Now I'm gonna talk about Universal for a second. Why am I standing in front of Carousel of Progress and talking about Universal? Why? I'll, I'll tell you why, because I'm tired of the divide. I'm tired, like, let's bring Universal and Disney together. Theme parks is one. Progress. That Universal does have uh, transportation from the resort uh, to uh, to the parks. However, if you are not staying on property or uh, anywhere around the area, you will either have to uh, Uber Lyft or uh, drive yourself. However, it should be very easy because they all get both uh, Island of Adventure, Universal Studios, and Cabana Bay, which is their water park. They all share the exact same parking structure. However, I am curious to see how that will change when Epic Universe, their third gate, comes along. I, I, are, are they gonna expand the current parking structure? Are they gonna build a brand new one? And have people travel to it? I don't know, I don't know. Time will tell. But if you are having to Uber anywhere, Uber or Lyft anywhere, whether it be Universal, Disney World, wherever you're going, I always, my, my number one piece of advice is to, is to compare rideshare prices, Lyft and Uber, because sometimes Lyft is going to be uh, cheaper, but sometimes Lyft is more expensive, just depending on uh, how many people are using it at the time, or, or what time of day it is, or what or what day it is, you know what I mean? So always uh, compare rideshare prices before purchasing your Uber or Lyft. Wait a minute, this counts as transportation, right? Good, let's talk near it. All right, this is very important. When it comes to buses, take wait time for the grain of salt. Usually there are screens at every bus stop that tell you uh, how long it's gonna be until your next bus arrives. Usually buses uh, come through every, for your stop, buses will come through every 20 minutes. However, that is not always the case. Sometimes it could be five minutes, sometimes it could be 40 minutes. I have waited approximately 40 to 45 minutes for a bus once, and I was very, not thrilled. Mine carts, another form of transportation, I'm counting it. If you are using the Disney transportation, do not forget that buses uh, start as early as 45 minutes before parks open and uh, they go until an hour after park close. For the monorail, it's 30 minutes before park opens and still an hour after park closes. Now what happens when, you've, when you want to arrive super early or you want to or, or you end up leaving a lot later than you normally would have? Well, then you need to be prepared to Uber or Lyft or to walk if you're if you're in walking distance within your hotel. That's you know get those steps in. That's why we wear the Apple watches. Get the steps in. Don't mind me trying to find our next mode of transportation to talk in front of while we talk about sneaky travel tips. Trains, transportation. Disney World is massive. It's basically its own city, and they even have their own uh, road signs to basically tell you where to go to hopefully get you to the place that you're trying to go. Well. It can be a little confusing. So if you are driving, I highly recommend use your GPS. Use your newfangled technology on your phone because that the GPS will be much quicker. I promise you, you'll get to, uh, you'll get to your destination a lot quicker than you would by following the signs. I'm uh, I get lost every day, and I'm here every day. So oh, here's a big one. Heads up. Disney Springs, any of the transportation leaving from Disney Springs, it doesn't go to any of the parks, not even one. Oftentimes people think they can get away with uh, not paying for the parking at the parks because they think they can use the free parking at Disney Springs and take the transportation to a park. Doesn't work. There's literally, not, not a bus, not a boat goes to a park from Disney Springs. So uh, just a heads up. You can, you can Uber and Lyft, but you're still paying for that. And if you want to avoid uh, those massive, crowd exodus like uh the very end of the night 
happily ever after finishes and then nine million people and their mom want to leave the park at the exact same time. It's, uh, it's not fun, it can be stressful, it can be very hectic. Well, here's my piece of advice. <clears throat> Wait, just hang out for a second, linger a bit. In fact, if you watch Emma, myself, and Quincy, I have the best day ever at Magic Kingdom. Some places at Main Street USA, they actually stay open a tad later uh, than uh, park close. But the ice cream parlor will stay open later. We got ice cream. Uh, so as people were exiting, we were just hanging out, eating some ice cream. Sometimes the shop will, shop will stay open just a tad later. Sometimes Casey Corner, get a snack as everybody else is leaving. That way you can just enjoy your time as you slowly exit. Mm. Not, not stressful. And now your belly is full. Here at All Ears Net, we always tell you if you are planning uh, any kind of Disney World trip to do your research. That way, when you are deciding what resort you want to stay at, you know what kind of different transportation systems there are because there is a huge difference between monorails and Skyliners versus buses and boats. And there really is a difference based on, you know, uh, speed, uh, accessibility, number of people in your family, and there are even multiple uh, routes to get to the same location, which is why you gotta do your research. In fact, we have a great uh, article up on our website that it goes through all of this. So if you want more information, definitely head to our site, allyears.net for more. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch us take you through all the rope drop secrets here at Disney World. Bye.